Where's my music? Hmm. Hello. Awesome. We got people. Is my mic working? I hope it's working. <coughs> White noise? No mic? Hang on. Uh. Okay. Well, yeah. There's going to be lots of white noise. Hang on. Maybe I can lessen it a little bit. Because apparently I always suck at microphones. And they always have ridiculous amounts of white noise for me. Even if I do the whatever the hell cancellation, noise cancellation. <coughs> Let me get music and then let people roll in here a little bit more. And hopefully the music isn't too loud. <sighs> okay. So, yeah. Let me, uh, I'll let people in here a little more, and then I'll start up stuff. <coughs> so today we're going to be doing action lines, which, uh, they're very, very good if you're looking to do more expressive things with your art. Let me pull in references. There it is. Yeah, um... <clears throat> this is more for the, uh, cartoony type stuff. Um... Like... Mm, cartoons... Whether they're, um... Animated... Or... Um, static, like, uh like uh, newspaper comics and stuff, they will use action lines because, um, like static cartoons, like comic books and things like that, um, they portray, uh, lots of motion and stuff, uh, with static images, and it's the action lines that help that a lot. So let me get some good examples. Probably should have looked for more actual pony references, but I was kind of strapped for time. Okay. Basically, a description of action lines is that action lines are a invisible line that goes through a form that um the, the the form follows along that line like you can see right here this little rooster dude we've got this line that his body follows that right there there's the line and uh <coughs> Um, 
Yeah, here. Uh, Tom and Jerry is very well known for their use of action lines. Um, you can see bad examples where um, the there isn't much flow to it. You got, you know, this is kind of going like that, that's kind of going like that. And they're, ver they're very, they're almost straight up as far as, you know, expressive cartoon characters go. But, um, to do that with ponies, um, let's try and get a sketch going here. Now, um, a lot of the, um, the, the, the process that I do to lay out uh, a drawing. Yes, yeah, Spike would be a very good fill in for Jerry. <laughs> Hang on. Let me turn off my steam noises. I want to hear you. Have you hear me bleeping? Da, 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 da. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um. Uh, a lot of this is uh, achieved through um, laying out what you're going to draw, the construction lines that people say. Um. Uh, usually, I start out with uh, you know the, the head and the torso, as well as the butt. Um, now, good practice, I guess, you could draw the um, action line first, which, like, let's say, I'm going to follow this line right here. And along this line, you can lay out um, what you're going to draw. And uh, from my imagination, you know, that what I'm, what I'm wanting to do, <clears throat> as I'm wanting to make uh, Rainbow Dash uh, diving, like she's flying down. So, um, you, you know, you got the, the downward motion like that. And we got her head, and then her body. And um, the, the whole body follows along the line, although it doesn't have to follow exactly. It's just the, the prominent line within the figure. Um, like you see here, the line goes like that, but you know, his head sticks out here as well as the arm and the feet. But um, you still get that motion and that um, expressiveness from this line. And right here, I think this is Kim Possible stuff. But um, you see the action line in this one is like that, but you have her leg and her head up here. Um, it, it's the, um, the, the main action or expression within the, the figure. It doesn't, so not all of the figure has to follow the lines, although it can, which is kind of what I'm hoping to do here. So, oh shit, <laughs> I should have put the action line on a different layer actually, in a different color. Bad idea. There it is. Okay. <coughs> um, and it looks like the wings in this one will not necessarily follow the action line, but that, like I said, is totally fine.
and probably the tail, we'd have the tail go out a little bit like that. So there, you have Diving Pony and it's following the line. Um, a lot of this is visualization. Um, like if you think about um, a, a pose or an action that you want to be happening, try and think about the line that goes through that pose. Like um, <clears throat> gestures and stuff. That's a big part of it. Hang on, let me move her up. Maybe we'll do another one. Um, like if anybody has a um, an action that you want me to do, I'll attribute an action line to that and go through a sketch. <coughs> Damn it. People are choosing right now to use me as an intermediary for buying video games, which is a bad idea. Okay. <coughs> um, baseball pitch. Should Pony be doing baseball pitch? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. If nobody else has a problem with the music then. I don't really see the need to change. I could be playing dubstep. That's an alternative. Okay, baseball pitch, wind up, throw. Okay. I picture that to be what the action line would be. Okay. Um. Um. Also, a good a good thing to do with action lines and poses is to do the actual pose yourself and imagine that you know how it would be laid out. Like you're gonna look stupid if someone um, watches you, but well, well, it's y yourself is one of the best references you have as far as you know how things should work. <clears throat> because if you ever have to ask, is that feasible, then try and do it yourself. And sometimes uh, figures can have two action lines that go throughout them. Uh, they don't really do two.
like for this one right here, I'd imagine the second one would be to, to be like that. That kind of a cross. Forgive me if I butcher this pose horribly. Looks more like a slam dunk going on than a baseball pitch, but oh well. Should probably stick to cartoony things. Apparently I'm rusty. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well. Hmm. Uh, let me look up some shots from an episode and see if there's any sort of action lines within the show. Yeah, Ross, um, uh, that's one thing. Ross is really good at the action line thing. He, uh, he follows action lines and things like that very well. That's why his drawing is very expressive in that regard. <coughs> you see that he does this very much cartoony style. Which is the aim of what we're doing here. You can see it most in Pinky. She's easily the most expressive out of any of the ponies in the show. And um, <coughs> her action line right here is probably along those lines right there. And there's kind of one in Dash in that it goes like that. But for the most part, um, ponies standing there aren't going to have much of an action line to them. Um, the only cases I could imagine that happening would be something like this, where, um, it's more of, uh, frontal shot and they're they're leaning like in uh, the best pet song where 
they lean in and sing. And no, I'm not going to draw that face. I'll, I'll draw a face that's similar. You could have them lean like that. And now this action line would only be for the uh, front shot, not necessarily for the back end. Because the back end would still, well, I guess it kind of echoes that. But that's not the main point of action. So. Hmm. Let's see. Is there any other poses or actions that you guys wanted to see translated or broken down into action lines and whatnot? So we got scaredy and tiptoeing. That's good. One sec. Um. Okay, so scared. Um, that could be done in multiple ways. It could be done with them on all fours, it could be done on twos, it could be done with them flying as well, like Fluttershy-ish. So, um, I'll try and do one of them. Hmm. And like I said, it's a, a lot of um, visualization, uh, visualizing what the pose is going to be. <clears throat> like I mentioned, the three, four different ways I could do a scaredy cat pose. Well, I'm trying to think of the best way to portray it. A horseshoe action line. Hmm. This one. Oh. This one would be like lying on the ground, kind of scrunched, scrunched up. Oh no, my nemesis, back legs. Try not to break them too bad. And you may run into problems like this. Like, I don't know how to pose her back legs. How to make them work. But we'll see if we can.
And also, um, uh, the tails can be used very much for uh, an extension of the expression. Because uh, when you imagine something scared, you imagine either something stretched out in surprise, like freaked out, or curled up into a tiny little ball. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. And so the tail, you could have the tail wrap around. And of course, we're going to make it Fluttershy. Okay, now for sneaking around. Ah, oh, shoot. Sense would be very uh, long, long strides, I guess, are sneaky, either that or tiny little tiptoeing action. So, um, I'm gonna go with the long strides. Uh, one of the good ones that I remember is, um, Dash in, um, Dragon Shy when she's doing that little strut thingy, the way that she's stretched out like this. Ah, uh, could you get a ref, Cosmo? That'd be fantastic. turning more into an, uh, an expressions than an action lines thing because I'm talking about like for uh, this right here for sneaking one thing I would do would be to have the shoulder raised and the head lowered like that and lightly. It's all right. That back leg is fucked. That's how I imagine that sort of sneaking. And there's also the tippy toe type of sneaking. It should be a lot more. Probably something Pinky would do, and that would be much more scrunch as far as body went. Like 
like a worm or something it looks like practically. Don't be afraid to exaggerate along these lines because if you follow the line, <clears throat> so long as you don't you know excessively exaggerate, things are gonna flow and they're gonna they're gonna look alright. Because that's the basis of a cartoon <clears throat> is uh, it's very exaggerated in their actions and uh, like there's stuff happens in cartoons that you know is not physically possible but it still works and that's what you're trying to do if you if you want to go for really you know exaggerated expressions that um, you want to have the expression be correct but it might not be physically possible. Um, and a lot of uh, practice as well as references is essential. Always, always references. Look at other cartoonists. Look at other cartoons. up sneaky. Hmm. What else can we say about action lines? I knew this one would be kind of quick. I didn't know it would be this quick though. Is there any other questions you guys have about them? Because I want to make sure Everybody understands how they go. No questions? Hmm. <laughs> oh, beep. We're not going to turn this into a Fez argument. Any questions pertaining to action lines or something like that? <coughs> Uh, no. Um, well, I guess I should read these since, uh, would every pose have an action line? Or are there some special ones that are just impossible? Uh, not every pose has to have an action line. But, um, if you want to express something like an action, action lines better portray that. Like, you don't need to use action lines at all. You really don't. Like, you, there's people I've seen who get get by on, you know, just, uh, they're, they're, you can't really see the action line in their work because they didn't build it around an action line. But that's totally fine. I mean, it still works. 
It's just, um, if someone were to try and do that, um, like, copy that drawing and put it to an action line, it would, uh, look more expressive. But, here, let's try and, um, let me do one another one. I'll try and do one of these without using an action line. And you can see the difference. Wait. Okay. not use an action line, which is, it's going to be harder than using an action line. Um, shoot. <laughs> this is probably the hardest part. <laughs> trying to undo what you already did. Um, like, there's going to inherently be an action line through stuff, I suppose. That is the, the spine. You could say that's an action line. But, um, like, here. I would not necessarily say that there's any sort of action going on here. She's just standing there, and it's not very expressive. <clears throat> you see, like, the only expression here is coming from her facial expression. She's otherwise just standing there, but you could attribute an action line to this form. That doesn't, you know, mean it's ex expressing an action, though. So now I'm just gonna try and draw an action without action line. Maybe that's a bad one to try and undo, because I can't really imagine a pony diving like that without having their hooves out in the front, which is the main thing. Let's try and not have the back legs go with it. out to the sides, not necessarily pointing towards any specific thing.
Okay. So, we got that. Ooh. Less expressive. You can still, even though I constructed it without an action line, you can still put the action line to it. But overall, it seems a lot less, to have a lot less impact. <coughs> That's a hard one. This is one of the things that once you get used to doing it, <clears throat> it's very easy to keep doing it. And you won't have any problems with continuing to do it. So, um, trying to break from that is kind of hard. I mean, it's a good thing to learn. Hmm, let's see. Okay. Well, are there any other questions for action lines? <clears throat> so I think I'm running low on action line material, and I could do some other stuff if you guys want. Actions, lines. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, at most, action lines have two curves in them. Um, let's do another thing. Thanks for stopping in, Iris. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, it will be on YouTube uh, later today, along with this file and stuff if you want to go through all that. Uh, let me get my YouTube channel. God damn. There it is. In case nobody has it already. Pour it out once more. <coughs> okay, so. Uh, like I said, action lines have at most two curves. Because once you start adding more, it starts getting chaotic. This one I'm trying to do 
laughing dash, I suppose. And her wings are not going to follow the action line at all. It'll be the thing that sticks out. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, there's uh, there's one with two curves in it. You can see the um, we have uh, from the head. The head is going in this direction. Er, yeah. So like the top half of her body is curving this direction, and the bottom half is curving that direction. Um, that's the implied motion through the curves in the action lines. Um, if you have any more than that, ha, I can't imagine how that would work out. Let me think if I can do that. Like, uh, I guess the third could be the tail? This, uh, sleeping pony? Hmm, let's see. Hmm. Let me try and think. So that's... No. No. Uh... <laughs> no, I can't imagine using... If you could sketch it out real quick or something and show me what you, you're thinking, I might be able to see, but um, I can't really think of an action line with more than two curves on it. <clears throat> because... It starts getting chaotic after that, and uh, the the coherence starts to you know it starts to fall apart. A circle, only a spiral, like that. Oh, yeah, you can work with that. Get something like... this going on. Oh, I suck at drawing circles too. But... <laughs> <laughs> don't don't try and do like one go at it like eh. you gotta if you do a few then you will see a circle start to emerge from those here you go Like, that's what, um, actually one of my friends does. Uh, the way she draws, uh, circles. I guess I'll call it the coffee stain. Because she does this. Yeah, let me do it real quick. She does is she draws... She gets a big brush like this. That's not necessarily a circle. She does is she races from the inside until it looks like a circle. And there's enough of a circle there. Um, and it ends up looking sort of like a coffee stain sometimes, which that's what I call it, the coffee stain method. <coughs> so you could always do that. Spirals. This is 
very interesting. Uh, human tutorials? Well, I could if people wanted. that this one would be Pegasi lend themselves to better action poses than most other ponies for some reason probably because they can be in the air and they don't have to have all four legs on the ground <coughs> so I picture that to be some sort of loop de loop going on but um what I thought you were talking about uh, beep was an action line that has more than one two curves in it like another like that's just I don't know even if someone's doing the worm, it looks like they're wiggly, but uh, they go through they go through stages of two action lines to one action line back to two. So uh, I mean one curve. So hmm. Oh, let's see. What other questions did we have? Unicorn horns? Oh, I didn't try the main. Whoops. And, um, it's good to have things echo your action lines, like, um, like I had here. Nope. Here. This. Uh, you have, uh, a bit of an echo here with the back legs following the same, the body curve and then the back leg curve, like that. You can see it here and here. Um... With the, the dive you have here, the tail is an extension of the action line. Because if, if, if you can imagine she's diving and you know the air is flowing past her, like this. And so that's going to push her, push her hair along with that line of motion. <coughs> oh, that is to get um, these toolbars switched. It's under window. Um, right now I have show color and tool to the right, but normally this is what size starts out as. And then you just check that and it moves over. <coughs> also, um, up here, these are color mixers. Your various forms of color mixer that you can have. I normally just keep the wheel though. <coughs> hmm. 
questions. Well, as I'm thinking I might move on from action lines and to something else. All doki questions. player organization well renaming them is a very big part of keeping your layers organized um I guess it's like organizing your files in that um you have folders folders are another big thing to, c to contain other things um like I always try and contain uh, the inks or the the line work on I into one folder when it could be you know I could do the line work for one character and then a line work for another they are not necessarily in the same layer but they would be in the same folder um, and make sure you name things to st stuff that you're gonna remember like if you just name it like one, two, and three, and stuff. One, stuff, two. Like, e it's not very descriptive. Like, try to give at least a little bit, you know, like, the character name or the thing that you're doing or coloring. Like, like uh, inks for line work, flats for laying out flat colors, shade for shading, that sort of deal. Just so you remem remind yourself later. <coughs> Renaming things is a very good habit. Like here, I have all my references in a folder, and I have all my stuff in another folder. I guess I can move on to other things. Let me save this. Yes. I forget what tutorial number I'm on. This is number five. Yeah. Alright, is there anything you guys want to see me draw, or another th subject that you want me to cover, or try and cover? <coughs> Movement and exaggeration? How do you mean, Cosmo? <coughs> oh! Fast wing flaps, waving arms, so they're blurred. Um, there's multiple ways to approach that. Um, 
if you're doing a static picture, most of the time you're going to want to do those little um, motion lines. Let me do this real quick. Okay, so um, let's say we have some pony waving her arms. Okay, so um, with things like waving and stuff like that, you're gonna want to have the um, most extreme points drawn out in your picture, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So, okay. Alright, so, we have her arms up, and we have her arms down. Those are obviously the most extreme points of motion. Um, hang on, let me do that on another layer. Up here and up here. So, um, you have her hoof up here like this, and like that, and then the downward motion like that. Pinky is now Shiva. Okay. Um, the next one that you would do is to... Um, since they're in motion, you're not going to fully see, uh, both extremes. So, um, we're going to slightly erase right here, like that, and here. And then the next one, her arms will appear at intermittent points between the two extremes, so we'll do two, I guess. Here's one, here's two, like that. And they could be drawn out a little more not necessarily have to be, but they will also be lighter than the others. And finally, the thing that you would add would be the little flaily motion lines like that. And now this is not always how you do it, this is how I do it. And I honestly don't do this that much, so I couldn't really give you another method. Um, if anybody else has a, a, oh, oh, there is another method actually. Um, what they are called is, uh, they're used in animation a lot, they're called smears. Um, if you Google animation smear, you will get some hilarious results, such as... This. This is one of the most famous. I think this was the first cartoon to use smears. Um, you missed pretty much all of action lines, but it's going to be saved. So, um, let 
what you can see here is that um, you have you treat frames like this one and I guess this one is relatively normal this is the end so these are the extremes these are like um, Pinky's arms being up and down and the in-between stuff right here you'll be replacing these little these little notch notch mark uh, kind of things with these little motion lines you'll be replacing that <coughs> with this with smears so um hang on let me put all these in the folder real quick and then I'll do a smear one um smears tend to work better for um actual animations but you can use them in drawings if you do it right like <laughs> obviously stuff like that right there <laughs> it won't really fly in just one single static picture <laughs> but you can do something similar actually hang on let me get pinky again armless pinky okay so now we have let's have the extremes there and so now what we're gonna do is like before we're going to erase the middle but we're gonna erase it completely so Um, so you can erase them completely, and what you'd have would be, um, the, the smear would be, like, the, like, the best way to describe it is, um, like, let's say you have something here, move to over here. The a, what a smear is visually, it's stretching something to reach this point. So, like, you have this, and that would be frame two, and then frame three would be stretched. It's kind of hard to describe. Other people would be much better at describing this than I would. Um, so what we're going to try and do is, uh, we're going to try and give her arm like this a little bit of motion like that in the form of being stretched out. It looks like she's got some big fucking chomping claws on her arms or something. Like I said, it mm, might not work out because this is an animation thing and not necessarily a static image thing. What I want to portray is the kind of I'm flapping my arms right now. 
uh, <laughs> the the blur of the motion in between the up and the down. And you can do that by extending the actual figure itself, like here. You have the stretching of the face and the elongation of his arm and his hand right there. It's kind of sort of what I'm trying to do there. <coughs> I'm past the question, I'm sorry. Um, drawing the faces of ponies. Hmm. Did you look at my other tutorials? I think I did. Face proportions in one of them. Um, th it can be broken up into sections, pretty much, to make things easier for you. Did you get the YouTube link earlier? Because I have these. I've done this a couple times and I saved them and uploaded them there. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Alright, well, um, if that is it for this type of stuff, I think I'm gonna um, end end this stream just so it saves uh, just this section and then I'll start up another one so last call for questions I guess covered so far, let me think, I've done, I've done basics, like anatomy basics for, uh, ponies, I've done shading, I've done style, I've done, fuck, I forget what all I've done, I've done quite a few, hang on a sec, Uh, basics of anatomy and things. Um, mostly I've done it from books and observation and help from other people. I never really took art classes specific for uh, anatomy, like life drawing or anything. Like if you can, you should take a life drawing class because that is, that'll be very, 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 very helpful for multiple things. Um, but, like, uh, me, I've basically learned it all from observation and just experimentation. Um, Scootaloo's high speed wing flaps. 
Um. Hmm. Do you have a picture of it? On offhand, I don't think I do. <clears throat> or a gif or something. Yeah, whenever she's on her scooter. Uh, let me see if I can hit up Sloney Buru and see if they have anything. something in cyan the picture already has a bit of color in it um how do you mean like hmm but I think I found one hang on Loading proof. Okay, yeah, I did. I, I found one too. Um, so let's see. Motion. Lail. Let's do a new thing. Are you uploading it to general or oh ha ah, that's pretty much the exact one I found as well. Okay. Um in that you can see uh uh they kinda do this but they make it a solid thing, so they they kind of I guess you could say they combine a smear with a, the the motion line like that. Um, so you have something like It's ponies with years down day today. smear and so you have the wing upmost at oh damn it let me separate it again <coughs> okay so you have the wing up be like that and then you have the wing down be flat down like that you have the up and the down. Um, and what they do is hold on a sec. Oh, 
Okay. Um, they do is they do like I said, where you get rid of the in between, but they get rid of it completely. And you have the little wing tip there, you have the little wing tip here, and they draw many, many more of the points in between. Which, like, let's say it's right here, and flap here, 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 here. Um, what they do is they take the wing tip on each of those and they draw it. And they draw it just enough to imply that it is the wing tip. And not every time, but they toss in a line like this once in a while, just for effect really, and they also include the motion lines like that. So they treat, they treat her flapping wing as like a solid chunk, but they visually separate it into separate little wing flaps by showing the wing tip each time. And <coughs> mm. oh, what tablet I'm using? I'm using a Cintiq at the moment, but um, I have used a Bamboo and I have used an Intuos, and they're all really nice. Um. I think so. I think that if um, you show enough motion lines like this, that people will understand that yes, it is in motion. This antique is very expensive. Very expensive. <coughs> but you don't need something like this antique to do good art. You can do stuff with a intuos or a bamboo or a mouse. It doesn't really matter. And uh, you could always try a few things, Cosmo. You don't mm, necessarily have to tie yourself down to one type of motion because, like, I've only shown you two and copied the show. So that's a total of three uh, types of ways to show motion. But there's so many more. Um, if you look around, I'm afraid I don't know any examples offhand, but. Um, there's definitely more ways to portray motion than just what I've shown you, and you try them out and see which one works best for you and which one people like best, I guess. So, it's a big experimentation thing. <laughs> I've done about all I can <laughs> for motion and action. Um, hmm. And if that's the case, then I might turn this thing off just to save this session. <coughs>
Alright, well... I'm going to be back then. Uh, I'm probably gonna go get food just for a sec. But, um... Yeah, I'm gonna shut this down for the moment, and I will be back with... I don't know, if you guys have something you want me to draw, I could give it a shot. So, um, thank you for watching Action Lines, the attempted tutorial, and uh, I'll be back in a few minutes.